name is Megan Anderson. I am a licensed professional counselor. And today I am here with some students and we're gonna talk about how living in a college town um, affects the relationship that teenagers have with drugs and alcohol. All right, who wants to introduce themselves first? JD Jones. Um, I'm Casey Moore. I'm Noah Amadon. I'm Curry Rogers. I'm Samari Cancer. And I'm Emery Berrios. All right, who wants to kick it off? Lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. <laughs> All right, well, so I did not grow up in this town. I came to college here, um, so I don't know what it's like from your experience to be teenagers living in a college town and what that was like for you in terms of drugs and alcohol. I know my own experience in a big city, but what's it like here? Um, I think that there's a certain atmosphere, you know, living in a college town, like, you know, like on the square, like, Thursday, Saturday, um, Friday nights that there are going to be a lot of people out partying, going to bars and stuff. And that I remember when I was younger, it was like, don't go to the square. Like, you're not allowed to go to the square past a certain time because, like, people are out doing who knows what. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, I'm just going to tell you, like, in general, like, when we were, like, in sixth, fifth grade, we used to, like, walk to the square on Fridays. And I remember, like, a lot of students, uh, like, parents, uh, like, the students said, uh, you can't be out, like, 6 o'clock, you have to come in because it's Friday, and that's when the mm -hmm. college students come out, and it was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. I have kids that age, and they walk to the square on Fridays, and I say that all the time. And, in fact, I'm not sure about this weekend because it's LSU weekend, yeah. which means mm -hmm. it'll be extra crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's a real thing that parents have that disclaimer about. Is that something that you all did a lot at that age? walk to the square or go hang out on the square. Yeah. It was like the yeah. cool thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Did you even notice that that was a place that the college students were hanging out on a regular basis in the times that you were there? Was that something that you even paid much attention to? No. Mm. Not when I was that young, but now it's even more so like. I think the main thing I noticed forward. was like not being able to go into like over half yeah. the restaurants. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I just thought there were restaurants at the time. Yeah. 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 Most of them you can't get into. No, that's very true. Okay. So I think that's interesting. The college students like to claim Oxford as their own town, mm -hmm. but y'all are the locals, so you claim it as your town. Mm -hmm. So is that weird for you that they kind of overrun a huge chunk of town in the evenings? Well, I think that like Oxford like wouldn't be Oxford. be Oxford without like Ole Miss. Like our like we wouldn't be able to like be a big like city or like the square wouldn't be a thing if we didn't have college students like every weekend that spend like a lot of money. Yeah. To, like, yeah, sure. we get a lot of resources, like our like amazing school would probably not be like this, like nice, and we wouldn't have so many things if we didn't live in a college town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think we also, what COVID showed us is that we also get a lot of money from people drinking um, and partying on the square, and so when COVID hit, it really like hit businesses hard that like the college students weren't there. Yeah, that was a huge part of it. The restaurants, the Grove, all the tailgating, everything that goes with the students being here. And alcohol is such a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. the biggest event in town is going to be like going to the Grove or something. And you like, you're like a mile away and you can already just like smell the alcohol from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like as a kid, just being like put into that, I think it like desensitizes you to like getting drunk at like yeah. 11 o'clock in the morning before like a noon game right mm -hmm. like that's normal like that's not a big deal or like yeah. they have like a like an eight o'clock game half the people are like already wasted at seven i'm like what? yeah, yeah that's a big <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like it's not like drinking a little bit it's like, like drinking a lot to where you're making mm -hmm. stupid decisions yeah. mm -hmm. like, and on like the topic of the grove just the entire idea as like when i'm growing up there's like the grove and there's the circle which is known as like the pg yeah. version uh -huh. yeah why does that even have to exist? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the only difference between like going, like people want to go to the Grove to get drunk or to do things they can't do in the stadium. But that's like, like go to the like Grove to like celebrate football. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but you can't drink in the stadium, so you have to drink at the Grove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you get to do it in plain sight, but also in hiding in yeah. a way, because you're camouflaged knows, in the crowd. But everyone knows what you're doing, yeah. and yeah. Like, yeah. that's why they want to And do it. the amount of kids who's oh, yeah. like who are drinking at the Grove, like young kids, like yeah. or like their parents are okay with them they're drinking at the Grove because yeah. it's like a social thing that everybody's doing around them. So then the parents are like, well, it's not that bad if my kid does it, too, because mm -hmm. everybody's doing it. It's yeah. not even just the kid's decision-making that's affected. Yeah. It's the parents, and then they're affecting their kids because... No one that young should ever be 
consuming alcohol. Why do you think the parents are okay with that? What is it about that environment? I think, I mean, I feel as like being a student at Oxford, like a lot of parents, like they want to, they're also trying to like climb the food chain. Like how in high school we're climbing like the social food chain, like they are too, mm -hmm. because they're like stuck living in Oxford. So they all just think on this, mm -hmm. this is the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they're trying to prove like, they're getting their kid a head start yeah. on like, yeah. the college hierarchy. Yeah. Yes. I'm a cool parent. My child is yeah. drinking yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Like the age of 13. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting, though. Do you think that they, the parents do think that they're helping their child in a way by exposing that to them and desensitizing them to it a little bit? That maybe it means they'll go less crazy in college? I heard of that. Like, if you well out now on your teens and you go to college, you're going to like chill it down but I feel like it's the opposite like since you already know like what you can do you're going to do it like you're going to push the limit even more because first of all you have peer pressure yeah. you're trying to get in fraternities sororities and it's just going to add on mm -hmm. plus the college work so it's just not yeah. I think it's not helping at all yeah, like, sure. there's a reason like you can't really drink until yeah. like yeah yeah because we don't know how it's going to like mm -hmm. make you like and I've seen like people who's like parents let them drink alcohol and stuff at like a young age or let them drink it now like a little bit here and there when they go out to dinner like special occasions and that hasn't stopped them at field parties from like blacking out like yeah. that doesn't change anything yeah so do you think there's conversation from the parents about how to drink responsibly and safely or do you think it's just like here you go from what i've fun. seen of kids at the grove it does not seem like they're drinking responsibly mm -hmm. i would agree because it's like, it's like almost like they're stealing it and trying to hide it, even though their parents are like fully aware that they're like skimming beer out of the cooler. Because uh -huh. there's no way you don't notice your kid walking around with a solo cup right in your tent. Yeah, there's no way you don't see that and be like, that's probably not a uh, Sprite or something. Like, that's not. Sure. And not also, cool. most of the time, probably the parents are also too preoccupied with their own drinking yeah. to yeah. focus on their kid and even care. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anywhere, I think in a college town specifically, anywhere that there's a big event or a, a large gathering of people, it turns into like a fraternity or a sorority vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, no matter how old you are, that's like what it's gonna be like. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so explain, what does that vibe look like? What does that vibe feel like? Just like no, party like there's no tomorrow and there's whatever repercussions happen are not gonna like fall onto you. Like it's either gonna somebody else handle it or the repercussions don't exist. So not even considering consequences or what it'll look like the next day. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. okay. like for some of these people, like there are no like the only consequences are like physical consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't have to deal with like oh if you like mess up a joke you have to like drink some like mm -hmm. like that doesn't apply. Yeah. Like, especially if your parents don't care. Like because yeah. that's like a huge thing like. If my parents don't, don't care, why should you? Yeah. It's yeah. like because they're I feel like the biggest punishment. I guess. Like, yeah. That's really interesting to hear it from y'all's perspective, especially as a parent. Um, okay, so what about the parents that are like absolutely no drinking at all, the opposite end of the spectrum? Well, I Do think kids still drinking anyway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes them want to do it more because like my friends are drinking. Yeah. How dare you tell me I can't do what other people are doing? Okay. Yeah. Well, it feels like a challenge, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like don't touch the hot stove. The first thing that three-year-old's gonna go do is smack their hand on the stove. Sure. Sure, and see what they can get away with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so do y'all see, what do you see more of? The parents that are very permissive or the parents that are very strict about it? Strict. Mm -hmm. I Can see I strict, because, how was I gonna say this? At Oxford, we're like known as like really like academic school, so there's like so much put upon us, so there's like a lot of parents at our school that's like no, no, no. But for instance, if you see some kids at the Grove doing the exact opposite of what they, they're like their parents telling them to do and they're like they're worse than some college students mm -hmm. yeah. and it's just like well I find it where like if I hear about like a certain person like they were really drunk here or there I'm like not surprised because I know who their parents are because like I've grown up with them and then there's like others where it is more surprising yeah. but like I don't know I mean I think the greatest type of parenting I see is, is where they're trying to mix both of them where they're acting strict and they're trying to act like they're like no drinking at all. But then like when it actually happens, there's no real re re repercussions yeah. happening. And it's mm -hmm. like, they are being permissive by their actions of their word if they strict. Yeah. That's yeah. what I probably see the most. 
gets a mixed message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then that's confusing, and so if there's no real consequence, no real repercussion, then it's okay to do again, it seems mm -hmm. like, right? Yeah. So yeah. it does send that message of being okay. What I think about is like, why? Um, because, you know, like drinking alcohol and stuff, obviously people do it because like, they're like, it affects your body in a certain way and like, you have like fun and stuff like that. But people also drink for other reasons. And I feel like maybe like academic stress or like wanting to blow off steam or like peer pressure or something like can lead to um, students drinking. And I feel like that also can be like stuff put on like parents, like the parents put on their kids. Because if like my parent told me like, alcohol is so bad for you, like you shouldn't drink it at all. Like if you drink it, you're gonna be severely punished. That's gonna make me wanna act out and drink it anyways. So I'm not really drinking it because I necessarily want to maybe, but because it's like this forbidden fruit thing that like mm -hmm. seems very, very appealing because it's so like taboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there must be something great about it if they're telling you not to do it, mm -hmm. right? So you kinda wanna see what that's all about. But I think you tapped into something really interesting that there's other reasons to be drinking, not just because we're out in the grove partying or double decker or any of those things that sometimes it becomes um, a coping skill yeah. or a way to relieve pressure. Do y'all see a lot of that with your age group? I, yeah. And I also see like parents, like kids whose parents are like okay with them drinking or like drink with them, like they tend to do it more towards the older crowd, but like the parents, because like if they let them like they don't care about what they do like with alcohol and drugs they become like they're like messed up sometimes mm -hmm. and so i feel like they do that to deal with their parents as well like, i also feel like i see a lot of um teens because they start drinking at such a young age they don't know what's like a healthy relationship with alcohol maybe that's not that hasn't been represented to them like i've heard stories of people bringing like um water bottles full of vodka to school yeah. like that's definitely s some things that happens like and it's just kind of weird because it's like um especially but jay drinking is so normal like you just go to the grove on like a saturday and it's fine so it's just a lot of mixed signals mm -hmm. do the teachers notice that because i know that that happens i've heard clients in my office who are high school students over the years tell me that that happens so i know that's true mm -hmm. do the teachers notice it or do they look over it I think it, oh, sorry, I think it truly depends Kay. on, like, first of all, the relationship, like, between that teacher and student. Because, you know, like, there are some teachers that I've had or have that, like, I just go to their class, I drink in the morning, and then I leave. But then there's other teachers where it's, like, they know, like, what's every, up. Yeah. yeah and, like, like okay. yeah. So I feel like it depends on, like, their relationship. And I think it also depends on, like, the teacher. Because, like, I, d I think some teachers just don't want to, like, yeah, so there are some that maybe have some rose-colored glasses on, yeah. and they don't always want to see what's going on, yeah. but they know there's probably something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there are, like, some teachers who will, like, talk to the students themselves instead of getting them in trouble. Yeah. Just, like, talk to them about what they can and can't do while they're at school, like, not try to control them. But, like, if a teacher genuinely cares about somebody, I don't think that most of the time they're not just going to go get them in trouble because that's just going to make the situation worse mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Because just straight up punishing somebody. If they're at the point where they're drinking at school to get through the day, just like giving them ISS or suspending them and telling their parents isn't going to help the situation at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned field parties. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a big city. There were lots of things to do where I grew up. A little bit different here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you find that that's kind of one of the few things that there is to do around here is sort of hang out on the square, go to the field parties? What else? Sit in the car, or hang yeah. out with somebody's house. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. about it. Yeah. That's or go to it. Sonic. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Sonic. Go to Sonic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, um, yeah. I didn't. I don't think I ever realized that like there is nothing to do. So obviously, people want to res resort to like drinking and yeah. like, smoking weed. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, think that's really true because there's less to do other than to just hang out, right? Mm -hmm. And what else are you going to do when you hang out to like relax and have a good time? Yeah. And when alcohol we see is readily available, mm -hmm. um, it seems like there's a lot of that that happens around yeah, here. Yeah, that's another, like living in a college town because all these gas stations know that there's a large clientele of people who are like almost 21 but aren't 21 yet. Right. They'll just quit IDing for everything, but then that also lets like 
older looking high school students or sometimes just plain up like any anybody could walk in there and get something yeah and the amount of availability for including like just drugs in general because there's so many there's an influx of people on like in the city that want drugs Mm -hmm. so that means there's going to be more so these kids are having more opportunities to get drugs like everything is just there's a surplus of it in the town and people want to get rid of it so it trickles down to high schoolers eventually yeah do you find that the high schoolers are targeted at all um, and advertised to, or do the high schoolers go seeking it out? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I Cause think because they were talking, they did that with like the vaping, like the flavors were targeted at kids, but then they took them away. And I think like, well, you can see that people smoke cigarettes, like teenagers smoke cigarettes back then. So I feel like there's all, they're always going to find something. If they take away like the, like mango, they're just going to, do something else that's not a fruity flavor, but they're they're gonna do something. Sure, sure, okay. All right, so what do drugs look like in high school these days? Mm-hmm. What's most common? Mm-hmm. Weed, mm-hmm. obviously. Weed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think also like, uh, like weed is, into, it is an addictive, and like everyone knows that like if you do like heroin or meth or like crack, like it physically affects you, mm-hmm. and like highly addictive. And so I feel like weed, it's also like, I mean, I don't know, but it's probably easier to get than like black tar heroin. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I feel like that is, and I mean, it's legal in most states. It's not legal in Mississippi. Um, but so I just feel like, like weed is the easiest to get and like the less, the least, like has the least repercussions. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably a little bit more easier to camouflage. Mm-hmm. That you've smoked before school versus it's going to be obvious if you're on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And also just like to show the prevalency of it. Like I work a drive-through job for a year now, yeah. and you can definitely tell. Like if you're working a shift out in the drive-through, there will be at least three cars that come by that smell like weed, and and that's just like a very high exposure because we live in this college town that we are being exposed to tons of people on these drugs and just doing it like right in front of you like they don't even care Mm -hmm. um yeah that's interesting i bet when they roll down the window they roll down the window and it's just like (laughs) like hello (laughs) (laughs) i didn't think about that that's true that's a good point um what about pills what do pills look like in Mm -hmm. high school is there a lot of that being passed around Mm -hmm. i've definitely seen people abuse it it's more low-key though people are a lot more flamboyant with alcohol and weed in my experience than they are with pills or like yeah. harder drugs okay mm-hmm. it's almost it's not like I'm, it's not like they're embarrassed i think they're just they might or they might be embarrassed about it but they also seem like more afraid to let people know that that's happening where people will be like yo or like they'll just like post a picture of them smoking a blunt but nobody's like posting a picture of themselves like popping pills it's yeah. just like yeah. there's like a it's there's still like a stigma around it even though we're in a college town but the access to it is like it's still more than it should be mm-hmm. yeah like there's an extra layer of consequence around yeah. something yeah. like pills you and other drugs they like you like it seems as though you should hide like the whole solution not like you should let people know when you're smoking it. yeah because yeah. it's like weed and alcohol like even if you're using them as a coping mechanism it's still like oh this guy he's he's having fun because he's drinking yeah. right. but if you're taking pills it's like People jump to that conclusion that you're self-medicating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like weed and other and alcohol and stuff. They're seeming more just like party drugs. Yeah. Like yeah. Even yeah. though we're a lot doing of, it to have fun. Even though many people do use them to self-medicate, it's not like mm-hmm. this dude has problems. Yeah. It's like yeah. 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 Anyone doing pills, it, it you immediately jump to like they are hardcore addicted to them. Like yeah. Opium yeah. addicts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so pills don't necessarily equate party drugs. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I feel like. Like personally, like when we started, I like didn't even think about like pills as like yeah. something that people use now. But it's like I think that if I heard like my friend was popping pills, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like she needs help. But if she, I, would, I would just saw her smoking weed, I would be like, okay, yeah, I guess fine. Okay. But it's the it would feel totally different. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So tell me what kinds of pills are being passed around and what seems concerning. I know ADHD medication is a big yeah. one. I'm on ADHD medication, and people have come up to me and, like, asked me for it. Yeah, for it, yeah. Um, And I've seen, like, um, just people, like, 
find pills like on the ground because college kids use pills and they'll just take them and you don't know what's in it. Oh, Wait, what? They would just eat it? Yeah, eat which 12? is incredibly dangerous. That's stupid. Um, obviously, yeah, but yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, that's a risky it. little game. It is, yeah. Okay. Gosh. Okay. Pain pills, pain medication, is that a thing? Um, kind of like Percocet. Yeah. Disclaimer. We'll flash it on the bottom. <laughs> <of> the <screen. laughs> um, but that's like been like a common thing that I've heard. Yeah. The next. I mean, like I had an injury a while ago, and like I got like some like pretty powerful pain drugs, and like I was told by like my doctor, like you cannot let this out. Like, yes. Like you need to keep this for yourself. Like you could probably get a lot of money for this, but don't. Right. Yeah. Living in such a like college town and high standards for education, they're like, I need something so I can live Stay up to focused. these standards of everybody else in this mm-hmm. environment. Right. Yeah. yeah, I need that extra edge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's true. I see a lot of that with the college students that I work with, especially too. Um, so talk to me about that in terms of being a college student and that pressure, or being a high school student and that pressure about going to college here in the near future. Do you feel that you have to have that competitive edge? Do you feel like that's what leads to some of this? Yeah. And some of that pressure? Definitely. But I, oh, well, uh, just like for sororities, like if you like are seen like, like on your Instagram, like, or on Instagram or anything like that, like with alcohol, like it's like they'll blacklist you, list you. Mm-hmm. And it's like you can't, but then it's like, since you're in the sorority, like, it's, it's okay. It's, it's all you do. Like, yeah, yeah. you get a frat party the whole time. So I feel like it's almost a double, double standard. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, what is um, what is that like in terms of the pressure that you already feel living in a college town about how you're going to fit in or not fit in as a college student? Because so many of y'all stay here and go to Ole Miss, right? Mm-hmm. So I know it's something that you're thinking about at an early age about how you're going to be able to fit. Yeah, it's definitely weird when like the I don't even know what they're called, but like the senior college students in charge of recruiting for like their frats mm-hmm. will like come up to like. 15, 16 year olds and invite them to like their turn at the Grove. Mm-hmm. It's just like there's no reason that you should be bringing someone that's in like soft, like freshman, sophomore year mm-hmm. to a tent, like where like the vibe of it is like day drinking and getting drunk. Like, but mm-hmm. they just do it and everybody's okay with them. Like, it's not really like praying, but like trying to get these kids like younger and younger, like recruiting them to join it the party culture. It can feel predatory though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that's a totally far off base word in some cert- some situations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the pressure of trying to act like the college students, eventually fit in with the college students, mm-hmm. look cool around the college students, I would imagine that that leads to a lot of doing things that maybe you're not totally comfortable with, mm-hmm. and that probably leads to some drug and alcohol use. And there's also like a disconnect if you're not allowed to like go out and do certain things like um, like speaking as someone who was like not allowed to go to field parties for a really long time, um, it was kind of like it was a downer every time one happened, and people would be talking about, oh, like this is what happened at this, like so and so did this, like, and it's just like, oh, like there is a disconnect. It's like because you can't go out, like maybe your parents are super strict, um, but they're also very watchful. Um, so, you, like there are some kids that it really is. It's like they can't fit in to that like area of teenage life i would i would say like now fomo is almost more of a reason people do things than like peer pressure is yeah because in my experience people will offer you something once and if you don't want it they want it for themselves most of the time so they're not like going to force you to do something that you don't want to do because and their main goal is like they might like you a little bit so they're like trying to be nice but if you don't want it then they want it for themselves for too. Yeah, they would rather y- you say no so they can keep it. Cause like, and I remember my freshman year, a, a lot of seniors and stuff who were like vaping in the bathrooms would offer it to people. And if they would say no, they'd like congratulate them and be like, all right, don't do it. I was just checking if like you needed it. But they were, there was like a, it's like if you did it, it was fine, but they also didn't want you to start cause they know it's bad for you. Mm-hmm. But there's still like, at least in the high school, there's still people that like care. Like they don't want you to go down the wrong path. Okay. So, is there a stigma around saying no? 
not in my experience. Because you make it sound like yeah. not so much. Yeah. So, not like, really. That was what like, we were all, always talking about going to high school, like, starting out, like, preparing for like, career and stuff. Like, if we I was supposed to say, like, hot take. I don't really think peer pressure is a thing. No, like, like, it's nobody's like, like take the drugs. Put, I feel like it is, and not like an alcohol and drug. Like, yeah. I've never, That's like more going out. Like, let's go to the movies. It's like, go, go, go. But like, when it comes to like alcohol like, and drugs, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then yeah. just walk yeah. off. Yeah. They're yeah. just like, because there are other boundaries that definitely get pushed on when you're like a teenager, but like I don't think drugs and alcohol. It's like if you do it, it's fine. If you don't, it's whatever. Yeah. Yeah, in my experience, most people are happy for you when you don't do it. Yeah. Interesting. Which is not what I was expecting coming into high school. Yeah. Because you see all the movies. Also, no one like. There's yeah, definitely like bullying that takes place, but no one's getting like swirlies. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but, like, when most parents talk to me like that's what they're expecting high school to be like mm -hmm. is yeah. like pe locker, people are yeah. like like mm -hmm. force feeding you beer in the bathroom mm -hmm. and people are like the upperclassmen are just like throwing food at underclassmen but it's like it's a lot I don't know why that's the reputation yeah. that high school gets it makes but me it's think, way what more was your high that. school experience yeah. like because that was <laughs> that's not how it is yeah there was some of that but we also had no social media we had no phones we had no you know I mean none of that stuff existed thankfully um, but yeah there was bullying I think bullying has morphed and changed into new ways of doing it ours were more obvious yeah and some of the things yeah. that you're saying y'all's are more obvious on social media and the comments and the blocking and the you know those kinds of things it's like subtle mind games but <laughs> the good thing about it now is if you really want to tune it out, it's not that hard to tune sure. it out. Because yeah. all you have to do, like most of the time now, to get out of that area where you feel like you might be getting bullied, just turn your phone off. Mm -hmm. Turn, Shut your computer and like walk away. Or block the person. Block the person first and you'll never know. Well, I mean, so if we're going to talk about drugs and alcohol and addictions in general, that's also an addiction, right? Mm -hmm. The phone, mm -hmm. yeah. social media in general. Um, and so that can also be a hardship for all of us. And I think that's something that we don't really acknowledge mm -hmm. as a true addiction and a true problem. Yeah. I think it's also like, to like bring it back to like drugs and alcohol, like to put that with that too, it's like if you went to rehab, like when you were like in the 80s, like you just didn't, like your family knew that's it. But now it's like everybody, everybody knows. Because yeah. yeah. like, you fell off the grid. Yeah. yeah. And it's like one person tells this person, then they keep telling people and it like gets posted on whatever. Like, it's also, like, you would, like, post, like, a three-month sober, but, like, where would you post that when there was no social media? Right. It's like, you didn't. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. I also feel like with the phone addiction, along with other addictions, it also falls into the fear of missing out. Yeah. It's like, you want to see, oh, what are they doing tonight? Who's drinking this? Who's drinking that? Who's smoking here? And who's smoking there? Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to be here. I don't want to miss out. I need my phone with me so I can keep up. Mm -hmm. with yeah, yeah, still feel a part of it. Yeah. 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 And then you end up being here drinking this because you were on this addiction, your phone. Mm -hmm. Now you're addicted to this, and it's just a cycle. And 99% of the time, if you had to turn the phone off and not know that that was happening, or sometimes you go and you're like, why am I? This isn't even worth this it. This isn't fun. Or like if you turned your phone off and not gone, the next day you would have forgotten about it. That's interesting. So my generation's version of peer pressure is maybe not so much what y'all experience because your version of peer pressure is the pressure you put on yourselves with the FOMO. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. So that's even changed. And it's because people also post the highlights. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. they're only going to post like the, the pictures where they parts. look like, yeah. yeah. They look good or like yeah. everything looks so fun. You're not going to see that picture of them like throwing up the next day. Yeah. Like that's just not a thing. No, you hear or the story, but you won't see the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you're not going to see like the like awkward moments where no one's like really having fun everybody's yeah. just you're sitting there sitting like nice. if you're like go to a house party and there's like nothing going on it's like they're oh. not going to post that they're going to post like the one or two pictures they took where everybody was having fun but then the other three hours it's like exactly. what am I doing here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I which I think that. does happen because of the college town because we see like we see like we look around and we see like all these college like frats and sororities especially because the Greek life on at Ole Miss is so prevalent mm -hmm. um it's just like you see that and then you want to do that because that's what the cool older people are doing because your entire life you look at like the people a couple grades ahead of you and once you get to high school you're looking at the college kids now and what they're doing is posting all these cool pictures so that you feel like you have to do stuff to do that cool picture but it's again FOMO not really because yeah. mm -hmm. they're not like 
they don't ask you to do it or anything. It's just like, they're doing it, so I want to do it. Yeah, so trying to create a version of that for yourself right now. Yeah. One, so you have it right now, but also so it'll help you fit in later too, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Makes you more noticeable. And the guilt part has got a lot to do with that because I know when I was younger, my mother went to them and she'd be like, don't do this because they're drinking, they got so drunk, now they're shooting at people. Oh, gosh. And then we get to high school and we're like, well, we want to have that much fun. So let's just rent out the field, and we can have our own party, but we don't have to get shot at. But they get so drunk, and now they're fighting. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone is always trying to outdo someone else. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, they, and it's also like, they want to, like, compete, like, oh my god, I threw up, like, the entire night. Oh my god, I threw up the entire night, but also the morning after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they try to, like, be like, oh my god, I, did, I went so much harder than you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but it's like, who cares? Who cares? And it's also like, why would you want to do that to yourself? Yeah. Like, right. But like when you're in why the moment. Why is that something to brag about? Yeah, but yeah. when you're in the moment, it like doesn't, it's just everything after, it just sucks so much. But in the moment, mm-hmm. it's just, it makes it worth it. Also, yeah. hot take, field parties really aren't that fun. Like they're you just dead. stand like, around. Yeah. Like it's just people stand around and they just like, I mean, drinking's the only activity really that you do, which I guess is like the whole reason for the party. Yeah. But people who go like not to drink, it's like why? Why am I even here? Yeah, yeah. And then you end up back on your phone, and you're waiting for your friends to get done. It's like okay, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and I think that's similar too. When you get to college, you kind of realize that the bars are not that fun. It's the same. It's yeah. the same and thing. It, they both cost money. Like why? Yeah. Does, why should it cost money to stand in a room with a f- right. bunch or, of like, people? Bar, like yeah, but it's also like when I hear like okay, so I visited. College town mm-hmm. in far away, like eleven hours away, and like that's like c- paying like cover for a bar, and it's like a hun- like more expensive than like a, like a, like gosh a football ticket. Like it's like that's not normal. It's crazy. Like the amount of money people pay in Oxford is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like and it doesn't mean anything. Like they're like, yeah. and then you hear the stories about just like how gross these bars are and like how disgusting the entire place is, and it's just like, why? You see the pictures of like a bunch of sweaty dudes with their shirts falling off, like staggering yeah. around. It's yes. like, yeah. yes. that's the perfect environment. Or you yeah. find out like how like, they put their hand on anything, and it just sticks. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah, but you paid a hundred bucks to get through yeah. the door. And you know what, it's a good yeah. Instagram picture. That's right, All right. good filter, good lighting. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you can see that, I think, the like they can charge so much money, one, because Ole Miss is such like a preppy school mm-hmm. almost, mm-hmm. and that trickles down to Oxford definitely. Yeah. Sure. Um, but they can charge so much, and these people want to be in something that's like exclusive, pretty much. So you can see that with like the fashion people wear. Like they'll wear super like outrageously expensive things at the Grove. Yeah, as muddy. Yeah. Well, not even yeah. that, but like most of the time they don't look like they don't look good, True. and they just want it because. It's expensive and no one else has yeah. it. Like it's not normal to like dress so nice for the weather. Yeah, like, you're, that is not you're the only. Yeah, I went university. Yeah, I went nation yeah. that dresses. Up. Yeah, I went to the Tennessee Ole, Tennessee Ole Miss game, and the Tennessee is like a much bigger school, so the Greek life doesn't like run the entire town, right. and they have like an actual town sport in it because our town is kind of built around Ole Miss yeah. instead of Ole Miss being built into the town, mm-hmm. which I think kind of makes everything just exacerbated because yeah. you have to rely on those college students. So you're just going to give them more and more and more of what they want. Right. Um, but it was like people were dressed up like they were going to an NFL game, which yeah. is jerseys, like T-shirts with a design on them that had mm-hmm. Tennessee somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like the most people would get dressed up was wearing like the overalls. Yeah. Like but that's, here, that's still like a stupid heels, like, little fan thing. hair done, makeup done, yeah. Yeah. earrings, the you whole nine yards. Yeah. 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 And just yeah. sweat. Pass out. And people Basically. leave a lot of stuff. Like Samari and I do Grove yeah. cleanups um, for the Oxford High School Color Guard, and people leave like Lululemon, like, like Ray Bans. It's like, so horrible. Yeah, oh, it's sure. a lot. And like the the smell. Oh, oh man, the yeah. smell when you just you can like like he said like you're a mile away, you can smell the Grove a mile away. Like mm-hmm. we we're at the four center, we can smell the alcohol from there. It's like. And we're and we're cleaning up and dudes are like stumbling all around, like pushing us around. It's like, yeah, 
And yeah. my mom always told me, like, to be so careful when I go out and yeah. I, like, on game days, especially because, like, drunk drivers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, and I tell, you know, I remember when I was a college student, I had this moment of realization where I went, oh, my God, people actually live here. <laughs> like, I forgot that people, like, lived here in this town yeah. and had, like, lives, right? And now I'm one of those people. And so here I am telling my girls when I let them walk to the square on Friday, like, people forget that the college students forget that people live here. You have to look where you're going because they are not paying attention to you. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's a real thing, daylight and nighttime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The drunk driving is really prevalent yeah. on game weekends. Yeah. And it's not – the sad thing is it's not just the college student. It, like – it covers if you can if you can operate a vehicle you're pr- like there's a high chance that someone like someone's gonna be drunk driving like there's not an age range because like the parents will yeah, do it the adults too because yeah. they'll go to the grove with their family someone has to get them back home yeah. and everybody everybody's drunk there so the mom or the dad is gonna end up drunk driving it's mm-hmm. I don't understand but again the town being built around the college doesn't let us have like an infrastructure to support like transit that's not you driving your own car right. mm-hmm. so it's right. really it's and we don't even have like that many ubers or anything mm-hmm. so it's just super hard people think it's like worth it to drunk drive because you're going to wait like three hours for an uber to get to you and there's sure. the buses will take you like to the square from campus or you can get around campus but if you live like 20 miles outside of the center of town there's no way you can get home without yeah it's driving not going to take car. you to wells gate yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What about DUIs with high school students? Is oh, that yeah. prevalent? Yeah. Is it? yeah but There's a lot like more. I now gonna... it's like when that happens, it's like a joke. Oh, really? Like yeah. It's like people are like, like oh, you got DUI, like, oh, you're 16. Do you do you I was yeah. somewhere and they were comparing like who had the most DUIs in the room. Like they were yeah. like, yeah, I have a DUI. Do you have a DUI? And yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh my God, it we was... almost killed people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I remember I was in the class and this kid was talking and they were like, just talking. I was like, bro, you're 16. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, God. I used to work in a drug and alcohol program on campus with a lot of students that when they would get a drug and alcohol violation, they would get sent through this program, and I was one of the people that had to see them. And I can't tell you how many times these kids would say to me, well, that's a rite of passage. Like, if you don't get a DUI in college, like, were you even in college? No, but it's <laughs> like, I, but I feel like maybe it's like our generation coming up or something, but it's like, no matter what, like, there, like, there's no reason for any of my friends to ever go home if they've been drinking or anything to, like, go home drunk, drive themselves home. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just, like... Yeah, there's, like, that line where, like, somebody getting blackout drunk and just, like, passing out is, like, that's on, that's pretty much only going to affect you to an extent. Like, ob- obviously, there's going to be other repercussions, but drunk driving puts everybody, yeah, like, that risk. you're going to see in, your, in the car yeah. at risk. Like, mm-hmm. putting that is just, like... It just knocks that person down on like the totem pole. Like it just shows like the kind of person they are, and it's way way too many people are doing it. So, do students feel comfortable calling their parents or another adult to give them a ride when they've had too much to drink? I was gonna say it's um, like with my parents, like they don't like they like let me know from a very young age, no matter what you are, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, you call. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, call. But like. I feel like that's not, and they would they would rather like put themselves and other people in danger than be caught by, by their parents for doing something they shouldn't do. Yeah. Right. Which in the long run is what. Yeah, it's difficult because you yeah. hear those things from parents and you want to believe them, but like you're just too scared. Afraid. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you know, it's you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get home safe, but, but like, my what about parents. the next day? <laughs> yeah. The next day. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what's going to happen after yeah. that? Sure. Yeah. And especially, like, if you are in that intoxicated state, you're not thinking clearly you're at not all. Thinking clearly at all. Yeah. So you're not really going to weigh, like, the, oh, shoot, like, maybe it does make more sense for me to get but a there safe are, ride home. There are a lot of people's, like, those people's parents who don't care, I think, do end up helping kids whose parents do care about what they do yeah. a lot more than they help their own kids. Mm-hmm. Because your friend group somewhere, and they need to they need to leave, and no one can drive them home safely. You call the parents' friends, and they like save all these other kids, yeah. like from getting in trouble. But I don't know. It's kind of like both ways of parenting push you to the same point, yeah. which right. is really weird. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I, don't I feel like a lot of those parents that don't care don't care because they don't want to be hypocrites. Like because they, they did it in high yeah, school. Yeah, but it's also like they're probably doing it. Like they probably have serious, like, alcohol drug problems, so they're like, well, what kind of 
Or when they hang out with their friends, they go get drunk. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, it is like they are all probably, hopefully, older than 21. So, like, obviously, they're like. But which is also why there's probably not enough education around how to do these things safely yeah. and responsibly. <laughs> there are wrong things to do, but there are also ways to drink as a young person and keep yourself safe and keep others safe. Um, but because parents don't want to be too permissive, they don't want to educate you on how to do that, mm -hmm. or because maybe they don't know themselves. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Okay. Y'all, this has been so enlightening for me as a parent. This is helpful for me <laughs> to know. But it's really interesting to hear your perspective and to hear how things are really still so much the same from when I was in school, but also to see where things have changed, mm -hmm. too. And I think that's important for um, our parents to also recognize that things have changed and be in tune to that. So thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hopefully I'll see you all again soon.